This is Code.org, and this is day two of our Asphalt Art Project. Woohoo! All right, that being said, I already have some code here, and let's see. Plop. Yep, and in this project, guys, I am making a flag. Again, this is a 12 by 12 space. This, this functionality, though, could apply to all the different board sizes with a few tweaks. All right, now... What are we doing today? Instantiate an object of your subclass. We've done this. Optional. Instantiate painter pattern or background painter objects. Now, that is going to be our focus. Write your program to create your asphalt art. Now, let's just take a peek at the rubric because we want to keep in mind what's going to get, well, an A. How can we shine? All right. Here's the rubric. By the way, this is the whole planning document. If you want to see how I tackled this as an example, check out that video. That being said, today we're focused on code for day two in this tutorial. All right, rubric, existing class. And that, again, we have our new subclass, develop a new subclass, extend painter plus, done, use methods to create one component, done. Now our existing class is what we want to be thinking about. Using one of the existing classes and its member to create one or more components of their asphalt art design. We've already done that. And we've done that through our subclass. Our subclass uses parts of Painter Plus already. So that's done and dusted. Two, adds a new method to one of the existing subclasses and uses it to create one or more components. That we need to do. So we have used Painter Plus methods throughout our flag painter. Now we need to add new functionality. I'm actually going to utilize a different class than Painter Plus for this. And I'm headed to my backpack and I'm going to import background painter. Now, if you don't have this, you need to go tackle the other portions of earlier lessons. So that being said, here we are. Now, what we have here, what we can do with background painter is obviously paint the background. And if you recall, it will paint everything, but it won't paint over any existing stuff. I want to go ahead and test that out. So let's instantiate this. Uh, I'll do it right here. So. And I'll stick with the same naming convention. Okay, I have a background painter class. And now let me set the paint for it as well, because we don't want to run out of paint. And again, if you're not sure where this is coming from, set paint is one of the part one method in the painter class, which we have access to. All right, so we gave us 900 paint. Ridiculous number. I just don't want to run out. And now we'll go ahead and paint this square first because I know the background painter won't paint over it. And let me just double check the method. I think it's, yep, mine was just paint background. And we can set the color. Um, it's going to be a flag. I'll do red for now. Obviously, this won't. Right. Oh, what do we got here? And this is why testing stuff is good. Ah, typos. Typos will kill me. Background. See how that does. Woohoo! We're done. No, we're not. We have to add new functionality, and that's not the flag at all. So, but good. We're off to a great start. Let me head over to Background Painter. And honestly, this will be somewhat easy, because what I want to accomplish is I still want to paint the background, right? Paint background. But I want to have a striped background. So I'm going to follow this pattern closely. Okay, so paint stripe background, and I'm going to want to do already what background painters do, but with a bit of modification. So wall, as long as I can move, cool, this works great. What am I going to do? I will paint the row, a, uh, whatever color I pass in here, and then I'm going to go ahead and say next row. Same functionality. Now, the difference here is on the next row, I want to flip or change the color. So to do that, I'm going to have it say, we're going to set this always to paint white striped background. And now to flip the color, I'm going to go ahead and do paint row white. And then next row. So what should happen here is as long as we can move, we're going to paint the row, we're going to go to the next row, now, what should I do here? Notice we're going to check if we can move prior to painting the row. So I'm going to keep in line with that logic and do that here with an if. If can move. Boom, boom, boom. Bam. 
And that way we have no issues if we well can't move because we need to check this before actually allowing this action to happen. And the wall loop was already doing that for this. However, we need to do it again now that we're having a different color inside to make sure we don't run into something. We're checking if we can move before we paint a second row. All right, let's see if we can change this up now. Let's see. But ah, perfect, beautiful, obviously genuine printed flag. <laughs> Pretty cool. And now we have met the requirements. There's some definitely for factoring that can happen here or cleaning up, but hey, we have a flag. Awesome. Let me go ahead. This shouldn't have anything. Yep. Onward.